Hey everyone, and welcome to a, an actual Bleach Brave Souls video. Not a live stream, believe it or not. And it has been a minute since I've done one of these. But here we are today, and the plan for this video is to rank the Espada in order of how good they are in Bleach Brave Souls. Now, for this video, I'm going to exclude any seasonal variants or special variants, so you won't be seeing things like Christmas Halibel or uh, the new Paris Almoitra. These are just going to be the canon Espada. Canon, the official um, anime and manga versions. And uh, how am I going to decide? Well, I'm just going to kind of wing it. It's going to be my opinion mostly. Uh, I'm going to try to explain why I put these characters where I did. So, without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Ranking the Espada. Oh no, oh no. I think you guys saw this coming, but in at number 10, it's the homie Yami. Oh man, uh, this character, guys, I, I think everybody knew that he was going to be number 10. He's just not good. Even when he came out, he was not very powerful. Uh, usually when the characters first come out, they're at the top of the food chain for a while, but not the case with Yami. Uh, first of all, let's go over the positives. Uh, he, he does have super armor, which is, uh, he doesn't get staggered when he gets hit. He has a charge attack, which is halfway decent. And on his special, he has bombardment. Uh, the numbers you can see there, not very good guys. 648 attack, 626 XP, uh, 12 recharge is a good soul trait, and he's a soul reaper killer. The problem with this character is, man, he is slow as dirt. Uh, the normal attacks, okay, not only are they slow, but they have no range. Look at it there guys, look, look at the punches. I mean, they are punches, so you can't expect them to have good range, but Yami doesn't have good strong attacks either. <laughs> He doesn't have any range on his first strong attack, it's just like a thin little laser. Uh, his second one is kind of like, he charges forward punching, it's not very good either. And the strong attack is okay, but for a charge attack, it doesn't hit as hard as it should. So, you know, even when you charge it up to full, it's not always guaranteed to clear out the pack of mobs you're fighting, unlike the more recent charge attack characters. Um, what else can I say about Yami, man? He's slow, he does no damage, he has no range. He has no frenzy. He's just not a very strong character. Mostly, he's relegated, relegated to being used as a troll character or as a meme or something like that. So rest in peace, Yami. You're in at number 10. Maybe if they made you in a release form, you'd be at the top. But as it stands now, number 10 for Yami. Clear, no doubt, no question in my mind. All right, so next on the list, we have Araniro. Uh, Araniro, also kind of like Yami, but he's not that bad. Um, he's quite, a, actually, he's quite a big step above Yami, in my opinion. He does have Frenzy, he has Poison on all his attacks, and he is a ranged character. Uh, 611 attack is very low, so his normal attack damage is pretty much not gonna do anything. Uh, his SP is 659, but you gotta remember he's kind of an older character at this point, so that was the norm back in the day. His soul trait is horrible. It's 65 poison resist, pretty much useless, and he is a soul reaper killer. Uh, the range on his second and third strong attacks is pretty decent, guys. It covers a wide spread around him. Uh, none of the strong attacks are, are full screen. Um, you can see it here. Uh, they, they go in front of him, that third strong attack, in a pretty wide arc. Uh, the second one is uh, centered around his body in a pretty wide arc as well. And the first one is a uh, narrow cone right in front of him. So he's okay, guys. He's not great. He doesn't do amazing damage. He does have Frenzy, which helps a lot. Uh, and he does have Poison, which also helps a lot. But other than that, his damage is kind of mediocre. Uh, I attribute that mostly to the fact that he's older. But even when he came out, uh, I wouldn't have considered him a top tier damage dealer. Uh, the special is okay as well. The problem with his poison procs is they don't have debilitator, so um, you know that's kind of a negative on him as well. Uh, his special does also have a weakened attack, and if you notice, guys, on the buttons, his second strong attack is actually melee. So if you get stuck in something like an extreme co-op and you disconnect, you can still conceivably finish the stage because he can do melee and ranged damage. So that's about it for Iron Arrow. Not a terrible character, but just not anything worth writing home about. And that takes us to number seven, and unfortunately, it's one of my more liked Espadas, the homie Zomari. Man, they kind of did Zomari a little bit dirty. K-Lab, um, remake Zomari, please. Two-legged Zomari. Uh, let's go over what's good about him. 
He does have Paralysis on everything, and it does have Debilitator, so when he procs Paralysis, it lasts a long time. He's also a ranged character, which is good, and his mobility, guys, his mobility is pretty freaking good. He does have Sprinter plus two, so he has that extra flash step, and he has Long Stride as well, so this guy is quick, and it kind of makes sense because he does say himself that he is the fastest is spotted. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but Zomari seems to think he is. Uh, anyway, another cool thing about this character is the way he looks. Look at him. He's just, he's just cool looking. Uh, very unique character design. A lot of people hate it. I don't mind it at all. Uh, 645 attack and 651 SP. Kind of put him in that hybrid uh, category. The problem is he doesn't do very good damage with either his normal attacks or his strong attacks. Uh, his range is also kind of kind of uh, lacking. He doesn't have very good range on his strong attacks or his normals. The normal attack range is very narrow, if you guys know what I mean. Um, he does have 20 normal attack damage soul trait, which is good. But uh, this character, he just doesn't hit hard. He doesn't have frenzy or flurry or anything like that. And it just really hurts his damage. But he is supposed to be a hybrid. Um, but like I said, the problem is he's a hybrid, but he doesn't really do the damage a hybrid shit, you know, uh, it's not really balanced damage, uh, it just, he just doesn't hit hard at all, I don't know how else to explain it, but Zomari in at number 7, rest in peace Zomari, once again he does have a melee strong first attack, if you so happen to be using him in extreme co-op or something and the room disconnects, just like Araniro, he could still finish the room because he could do melee damage as well, I mean it would still take you like 10 years, but you could conceivably do it, so Zomari in at number 7. Rest in peace to the homie Zomari. Hopefully you'll get more love if they ever decide to uh, remake you. And God, Caleb, please give him a, you know, a 1440 resolution special. I can see the pixels on his special, man. And, it, you know, it, that, that is just, that, that, that is not right. The next Espada on our list, I did not want to put her in this position, but it is the Bay Halibel. Halibel at number 7. And guys, this is still a very good character. Unfortunately, I think some of the other Espadas are better than her, so that's where she rests, number seven. Now, Halibel is definitely classified as a hybrid character. Now, she doesn't have Frenzy or Flurry or anything like that, but she still does surprisingly good damage. If you look at her numbers, 684 attack and 659 SP is not bad. She also does have a 20 strong attack damage soul trait. So um, her damage, her numbers, her raw base skills and stats are actually pretty good. Uh, this character doesn't get a lot of notice, but um, she does uh, do the job properly. Now, if you look at her normal attack range, it's also really good as well. So, uh, she has a complete, uh, well-rounded package. She is possibly one of the more well-rounded Espadas in this group that we're talking about. Uh, other positives, she has very good strong attack uh, range. It's not full screen anything, but it, everything hits kind of in a wide arc. So, she's very good at crowd control, I would say. She can knock enemies down and keep them down. Um, you just have to kind of learn how to use the strong attacks properly. Uh, and you mix in some normals and she's a very effective character. Uh, she also does have bombardment on her special. So if you have dupes of Halibel, you might want to think about stacking them because she will do very good damage with her special. Uh, another positive about a hybrid character is that there is very good versatility. Uh, you could build this character any way you like. You could lean towards more strong attack damage more normal attack damage, more recharge, and it will all work. So uh, for those people that kind of like to, you know, tailor a character to meet their specific playstyle, this is a good character for you. Uh, negatives, that's really, playing this character, there are really no negatives. She's pretty good at everything. She's just not great at everything. And that is why Halibel falls in at number seven. Moving on to the next character on our list, in at number six is Espada number six, Grimjo. Uh, Grimjo and Halibel, I kind of debated whether or not to flip flop them, but I got to give the edge to Grimjo at number six because he just flat out does more damage. Uh, if you look at his numbers, he has 619 attack, 692 SP, which is still respectable. He does have a defensive soul trait, which kind of hurts his DPS, but he makes up for it because he has Frenzy, guys, and Frenzy doubles your strong attack damage, essentially. Uh, his speed is also excellent. Like, look at the normal attack speed. It's so quick. It doesn't do much damage, but um, it is a good tool to use in between strong attacks. Uh, he also does possess a vortex, which is excellent for crowd control. And everything comes out pretty quickly, except for the third strong attack. 
Uh, the third strong attack is probably one of the weaker ones, not in terms of damage, but in terms of its range. Uh, it's centered around his body, and it doesn't really go out that far, so by today's standards, the range on his third strong attack is poor. Uh, the Vortex, though, his Vortex is great. It covers a wide spread, it lasts a decent amount of time, uh, and that first strong attack is also very good as well because it gets him right into the thick of things. If you want to combo strong attack one and then follow it up with strong attack three, that's a good way to play this character. Um, just overall, he does very good damage for an older character. And this character came out at the same time as Yami, so, I mean, <laughs> it just shows, it goes to show you how bad Yami got done in this game. Uh, he, Yami is not even close to Grimja's DPS or it's just overall fun. Like, Grimja's quick, he hits hard, and he's Grimjo for God's sake. So, um, you don't really see him too much anymore because he is a little bit outdated, but he's definitely a usable character. Uh, if you have a stage where you need an Arankar killer, he's the guy to go to if you want to use him as final. So, Grimjo in at number six. Um, I think he's still pretty good. And if nothing else, he's still a very good uh, character link because he is 20 DR guys. Okay, so that brings us into the top five, and in at number five is Xyloporo, or Xyloporo, however you want to pronounce it, you know, go ask Xyloporo himself, I don't know, he, see what he tells you, but Xyloporo is in at number five, uh, not for his damage necessarily, but for his utility and his role as a, as a support character. Uh, the main thing you will notice about this character is that he has a heal, which is also a boost, and it can do a little bit of damage. Not much damage, but it does something. So that is a very unique thing. He's the only character to have something like that, and it makes him a very, very strong support character. Uh, his numbers are excellent as well. He has 743 attack. 608 SP is uh, kind of on the low side, but normal attack damage is his forte. As you can see by his soul trait, it is an upgraded soul trait with 25 normal attack damage. So if you spec this character for normal attack damage, He's going to be a really hard hitter, as you can see in the example that you're watching right now. When I have the boost up and I uh, hit him with the Nats, I can hit up to you know, 13,000, 12, 11. It's very good damage. Uh, the problem is that you'll have a very, very long cool time on his heal and boost. So if you're to use this guy in a co-op, I recommend you play him as a support character. So that means going full recharge so you can maximize the uptime on the boost and maximize the number of heals you can get out. Leave the damage to other people, in my opinion, for this character. Uh, in co-op, in single player, you can do whatever you want, but uh, you want to be playing that support role in any of the harder co-ops. Uh, he does also have poison on his uh, third strong attack, his normal attacks, and his special. I don't know why they didn't put poison on his first strong attack. Um, maybe they thought it would be too OP, but um, the problem with this poison it is that there is no debilitator so it doesn't last a very it doesn't last a very long time actually wait he does have debilitator excuse me guys i'm not going to edit that out he does have debilitator so his poison does last a very long time what i meant to say is that he does not have enhancer so his boost is a very very short boost so um it's only going to last for a few seconds uh, that's why if you're playing in a support role you want to have recharge but pretty good damage pretty good support capability for xyloporo uh, he's in at number five for sure. Okay, coming in ahead of Xyloporo is Spada number one, Stark. Uh, Stark, unfortunately, I can't put him any higher than this. He's still a very, very good character, um, but the other characters I feel are better than him. So number four is still a pretty decent ranking for Stark. Uh, I know he's a fan favorite. He's one of my favorites as well, him, Zamari, and Noitara. But um, he is very one-dimensional. If we look at his numbers, he has a very high attack, 747. That's excellent. Uh, his SP is on the low side, but that's not what he's meant to do. His soul trade is perfect. He's got normal attack damage. He's also a soul reaper killer. Uh, Stark, he's a NAD character all the way. Um, he can't really do anything else, and that's one of the problems I have with this character. He's very, very one-dimensional. He can only be built as NAD. If you try anything else, you're not going to be as effective. Uh, because his strong attacks, you're just not good mechanically. Uh, they don't have very good, uh, you know, just uh, mechanics, like I said. Uh, especially strong attack number two. I feel like it does no damage. I feel like it does, has a very, very uh, restrictive range. Uh, Stark is a very fast character. His normal attack damage comes out very quickly, if you'll notice it in the gameplay. Um, 
The range, it's acceptable, but it's not great. He is, I would say he is kind of a harder character to use, especially in something where there's a lot going on at the same time, because you do have to kind of dodge around a lot and getting close to use his NAD properly. Um, he's definitely kind of an experts only character. If you plan on using him in uh, extreme co-op, inherent zone or anything like that. But if you can use him effectively, he will do very good damage for you. Uh, other than that, Stark has uh, uh, <laughs> pretty much that's it. Uh, I, I can't really see any negatives to this character other than uh, his difficulty to use. Um, I find myself getting hit a lot on this character if there's lag or something. Uh, and his strong attacks, they're essentially useless. Uh, they're pretty much only guard breaks. Uh, also with the special, um, there's really nothing to talk about his special either. It doesn't do any anything special at all. It doesn't even do that great damage. But if you're looking for a NAD character, if you like playing normal tech damage characters, Stark is probably one of the best um, that's out there for his spotters. There is one better, and I think I know you know who he is. And we'll get to him in a minute. So Stark in at number four. All right, everyone, that brings us to the top three. And number three is the homie, the skeleton. It's Barrigan. Barrigan is an excellent character to this day. He's a little bit older now, but he's still very effective if you play him correctly. And if you build him the way he was meant to be played. Uh, Barrigan, if you look at his stats, he has very high spiritual pressure, 729. And that's saying something because this character came out months and months ago, maybe even a year ago. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but uh, that's pretty good for an older character. It's even pretty good for a newer character. Uh, he does have low normal attack. His normal attacks are pretty much useless. But he does have a 12 recharge soul trait. And if you build him for recharge, he is a very safe character to use. He will always have a strong attack available. You load him up with 14 recharges or uh, the Frenzy Byakuya or the Frenzy Yoruichi. And he's going to be a beast. The strong attacks, if you look at the mechanics of them, uh, they're all kind of linear in front of him. But it's, it's a wide arc. Um, I don't know if I can phrase that any better. You just have to look at the gameplay itself. They're all directly in front of him, but they cover a wide cone in, in front of him. So um, you do have to kind of stay in the back and uh, keep all the enemies uh, in front of this character. But um, he does hit like a truck. He has Frenzy, so that is um, another bonus to his damage. Uh, he also does have the chance to weaken on all of his attacks, including his special. So. The weakening is debilitated, so it lasts a long time. And just a really fun character to play, guys. Uh, I don't know what else to say about him. This character is kind of underrated. I think he's uh, anything where there is, um, you know, uh, a dangerous co-op, like maybe extreme co-op or inheritance zone. Farragon is a safe character. Build him for recharge, and you can't go wrong. So Farragon in at number two. No real negatives to this character. Um, he doesn't even. He does even have a. Uh, slight hybrid i wouldn't say he has hybrid potential you want to go with a mix of recharge and strong attack damage either way suit him to your play style and uh, you'll have you'll have a winner guys he's he's a great character underrated for sure all righty so at number two we have my favorite number one espada i gotta put him at number two though it's gonna be noitera this character holds up very well to this day he was released in the banner with grimjo and yami but uh, I, in my opinion, he's definitely the best one of the three. His normal attack damage is top tier, guys. Uh, he does have Flurry. That alone puts him in a, a higher tier than the rest. Uh, the range on his normal attacks is also huge. If you watch it on the gameplay screen, it hits very far away. So you can stay at a pretty decent range and still be effective. It's not, it's not as dangerous to use as Nat. Um, if you look at the numbers, 650, 657 attack is not that great, but like I said, he does have flurry, so it's more than compensated for by the flurry. And he does have the normal attack damage soul trait as well, which adds on to his neck. Um, this character, very strong normal attack damage character. I kind of do wish he had super armor, but you know, if he had super armor, he might be a little bit overpowered. Uh, he does have a vortex, which is great in PvE. Uh, round up all the enemies and then you can just hack him down with his huge sides. Uh, his special has a defense debuff, so on bosses, you throw that thing at her, uh, you throw you throw his special out and you start hacking at the boss, he's gonna die really quick. Uh, not much else to say about Noitra. there's no real weaknesses. He does have, uh, I believe it's the highest defense in the game as well, so you might see people in PvP 
building Noitera with full defense with damage reduction, and that, that does work pretty well. He can take out a green Yamamoto pretty easily uh, if you build him right. If you have some link slots on him, uh, he's still viable in PvP. Just a great character to play and super fun. Look at that Vortex, and it lasts a decent amount of time, guys. Uh, when I was replaying this character for this video, I had forgotten how long that Vortex lasts, so it's a very effective tool for him. This character is great. I love playing this character. I have I have him link slotted. Um, just one of my favorites, and uh, unfortunately, he's in a number two. And at last, the reason Noitura is at number two is because your boy, fan favorite, Segunda Etapa Okiora, the second version, is in at number one. Um, I don't know if you guys will disagree with me much on this. Uh, some people might put Noitura ahead of Okiora, but for PvE player versus, uh, you know, enemy uh, environment, this character is second to none amongst the Espadas. Um, he's not very good in PvP, but I mean, guys, he has a huge toolkit. Toolkit. If you look at his numbers, 729 SP, still very good for this, uh, for even up to the current day. Uh, 12 recharge soul trait. If you build him for recharge, guys, he's going to be able to spam those strong attacks. Um, if you look at his moveset that I've listed on the screen, he has everything. He's a ranged character. He has the much, much valued Moving Vortex. The Moving Vortex is invaluable in guild quests. He has Frenzy. He has a charge third strong attack that does huge damage. Uh, something to note on the charge strong attack, though, is it is in front of him. It's not like a circle around his body, so you have to be behind the enemies have to be in front of him to maximize its effectiveness but still a very hard hitting charge strong attack also on his special he has burn so guys he has pretty much the full tool set uh moving vortex and a charge strong attack you can't go wrong with it he has frenzy he has 729 sp he's a recharge character my preferred build on on okr is the frenzy Byaki and the frenzy uruichi with another 14 recharge try that out with full sp and uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, I, I don't think anyone is is uh, shocked by my pick for number one. It's got to be Okiyora. He's just he's just a beast in everything you put him in. Extreme co-op, guild quests. Um, I don't know, inheritance zone, raids, what, whatever you want to use him in, he can do it. He's an amazing character. He has the full set of moves of tools at his disposal, and he's just fun as hell to play against. As far as fun factor goes, I don't think he can be questioned that uh, Okiora is number one. Uh, Noitra can make a run at him, but um, yeah, I just love playing Okiora. I wish I had the chance to use him more often, but I, I, I really have a lot of characters I like playing. So, uh, But when I need to get the job done, Okiora at number one. So there you have it, guys. That is my list of the Espada, ranked in order of their ability and their effectiveness in the game. Um, I think you guys... I think most people will agree with my rankings. Uh, there's some spots in the maybe in the, the lower half that you can debate. Uh, but the top five, the top three, I think it's pretty clear that those are the top three as far as the, as far as, as the spot as go. Excuse me, I can't speak. Um, could some of them use a remake? Um, possibly. Maybe like people like Zomari, please Zomari, two-legged version. Um, maybe, maybe even Stark, I don't know. Uh, I always felt that Stark should be a raged character, but you know, he, his original version was raged, so I understand why they made him a melee character. In the manga, he was fighting against Shunsui in his uh, melee form, so that's fine by me. He's still a good character. Um, do they hold up to this day? I think most of them do. The top ones definitely do. Uh, you can't really compare these bodies to the manga captains or any of the manga characters or any of the movie characters because those characters are going to be in a whole higher tier than these Espadas, unfortunately, because they're special edition characters, guys. They're definitely going to be better. So, I mean, fair enough, fair enough, Kayla. Uh, maybe in the future we'll see some special edition Espadas. I doubt it, but um, you never know. You never know. It, it could happen. So, those are my rankings. Let me know what you think in the uh, comments down below. Uh, I plan to do a video on the captains, maybe on the vice captains as well. I don't actually have all those characters, so it might be tough. I'd have to scrounge for the footage. But um, let me know if you want to see that as well, guys. Thanks for watching an actual Bleach Cowboy video, not a live stream. What? Um, thanks for watching, guys, once again. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream. Bye-bye.